EU Commission President von der Leyen has delivered her first State of the Union address, setting out the European Commission's priorities for the coming year. The foundation of her speech was for Europe to move from fragility to vitality after COVID, changing by design, not disaster or diktat. She had previously stated in her Agenda for Europe that the European Union has the foundation to transition to a healthy planet and a new digital world. She said we had moved out of an era of crisis management and could now look forward to new opportunities. See now what our top advisors have to say on her address. Von der Leyen today outlined the Commission's Fit for 55 reduction target for 2030. The Parliament, though, recently voted for a 60% reduction target. And in the Council, the German presidency is supported by countries like Denmark, Sweden, France and the Netherlands, but coal-dominated Central Europe is pushing back. So we should expect to see an East-West division in negotiations this fall. On the national level, we should expect further economic support from the recently agreed EU Recovery Fund for various Green Deal initiatives. That means support for renewable energy transition, building renovation, sustainable agriculture, and nascent green technologies such as hydrogen and advanced biofuels. On the European level, we will see an expansion of the EU's emissions trading scheme to cover new sectors like road transport, shipping and buildings. And the Commission will introduce a new carbon border adjustment mechanism, which is basically a CO2 tax on imports into the single market. Now, von der Leyen today reassured that these initiatives won't hurt industry, but the Commission is slowly realizing that the green transition comes at a cost, a cost that we can no longer let the environment pay for. Ursula von der Leyen's uh, first State of the European Union speech gave a, a very optimistic tone, a bullish one, uh, about the fact that this is Europe's moment. Uh, the uh, COVID crisis will see Europe emerging stronger and more united. On the digital front, nothing fundamentally new, uh, apart from her recognizing that indeed Europe has missed the private data, the business to consumer data race, but could prevail in the business to business industrial data race. Um, I think the, the most telling announcement was more that 20% of the EU recovery fund will be indeed allocated to the European digital transformation. Uh, two things missing in my view in the speech. One, um, nothing about how is Europe going to work with its global partners, being government, like-minded governments like Japan, but also the United States on the digital front. And how is Europe going to build a true European uh, innovation and digital base uh, made of startups, SMEs, scale-ups, uh, large companies uh, to really build, uh, uh, in fact, a digital strategy from the bottom up and not just from the top down by using uh, good regulations. Two days after an EU-China video call joined by German Chancellor Angela Merkel, President von der Leyen has some robust words to say about China. Describing it as a partner in some areas, she also highlighted that it's an economic competitor and a systemic rival. She highlighted the clash between China's system and Europe's belief in the universal value of democracy. She said the EU wants to push back more forcefully on Hong Kong and Xinjiang, which they should, but it needs member states backing. In this respect, von der Leyen argued for ending qualified majority voting in some areas of foreign policy. She also talked about an EU Magnitsky Act, which is long overdue proposal that has been mandated by many members of the European Parliament, Parliament and will also allow the EU to address China's and Chinese human rights abuses. But the speech could also have been stronger on supporting democracies under pressure from Chinese coercion, especially Taiwan, and member states like Czech Republic that have sort of voiced support for Taiwan and experienced China's coercive diplomacy. Margaret Thatcher is maybe not the most likely politician you'd expect to hear in an EU State of the Union speech. But in a short section on Brexit, the Iron Lady was deployed to fire a shot across the UK's bow. Admitting that chances for an agreement between the EU and UK are beginning to fade, the Commission President focused her fire on the UK's internal market bill, warning that London cannot unilaterally change the terms of the withdrawal agreement. 
The passage is unlikely to change the dynamics of the current negotiations, not least because number 10's immediate focus is on negotiating with its own backbench Conservative MPs threatening to rebel against the government in the coming days. To no surprise, COVID-19 was the focus of von der Leyen's first State of the Union speech, the worst global pandemic in generations and one of the most serious challenges facing the EU. Nonetheless, the tone and picture painted by the Commission President was rather upbeat and positive. It was about building a stronger social market economy after the great sacrifice made by Europeans. In the field of health, van der Leyen set out new measures for EU cooperation and the European Health Union, as well as convening a global health summit in Italy. But the substance was much of what we already know, including next generation EU, the 750 billion euro recovery plan. Fundamentally, the recovery plan still needs approval by member states, and it still hangs on the MFF, the 1 trillion euro budget, which European Parliament must still pass. Negotiations are ongoing, and the frugal four or five are watching. If you ask me, Ursula von der Leyen's takes on foreign policy were quite astonishing. The most remarkable difference was the clear language she used. She put democracy and European values in the middle of her analysis of what's going on in the world. And she made some concrete calls. She called upon her colleagues at the European Council to switch to a qualified majority voting. She announced the proposal of a European Magnitsky Act. She expressed her solidarity with democracy movements in Hong Kong and Belarus. And she openly criticized countries like Russia for their pattern of foreign interference in elections and domestic affairs of other countries like Georgia and Ukraine. So good call, Ms. von der Leyen. Let's see how your colleagues at the European Council will respond as it takes two to tango. But together, you can turn this EU into a reliable and capable global actor. Let's go for it.